Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Fleekazoid Podcast. Did you know that I launched a Patreon page to support me? Yes, for $2 a month, you too can spread Fleeksy supremacy. Go check me out at patreon.com slash Fleeksy. Today's episode is about feeling alone and unlovable. Feeling like you have no value because you think that because somebody doesn't want to date you, be with you, marry you, or have any type of intimate relationship with you that you must somehow be lacking something deeply, which is not the case. And we'll get into it. And this is semi-Valentine's Day themed, but not too heavily. So let's get into the meat. I used to think as a kid into my teenage years and in my early adulthood, which I mean, hi, I'm 27, but I'm talking about like my early 20s, that my life was so fucking boring and it was so stagnant. And I'm just this girl who goes to school, maybe works out every now and then, who, you know, had a job. But for the most part, my life was pretty stagnant. And the only way to have excitement in my world was to date a man. And with this man, hopefully he would have his own exciting life that I could be a part of. Because God forbid I grab life by the cojones and decide to make my life exciting on its own. Well, anyways, I basically thought that my life had no value unless a man decided to see my value And in seeing that value, he would take me into his ever so daily wondrous world. And it's even deeper. I almost felt like my life had no meaning. It had no trajectory. Like, yeah, I could work. Yeah, I could go to school. Yeah, I could work out and care about my health. But if I didn't have a man, what the fuck is the point of all that? Like, bitch, I need somebody. If you guys haven't picked up on it, this is codependent as fuck. Wanting love at some point in your life, that's not codependent. All the other toxic shit that I mentioned, that is. And while I felt like I had in some aspects moved past this because I had dated someone who was very like emotionally abusive, who clung on to me as the source of excitement and trajectory and meaning in his life, I thought, oh, my codependency is cured. Like I've been on the other end of it. I would never want to live that way again. 2020 happened and I spent 10 months without seeing a friend going to my old favorite restaurants, getting boba. I even like went without the gym until I got the vaccine. So in 2021, after May, like around June and July, it's like I'm starting all over again. And I came back into that mindset of, oh my God, I'm so alone. Look at what the last 10 months has been like. If only there was a man. I don't care what the CDC says or what the workplace was telling you about how, oh, let's just get things back to normal. It ain't fucking normal. What happened to us was historically bad and it wasn't good. It wasn't good for any of us and it was real and it's not over. Like, we may not be isolating, but it sure as fuck isn't over. So some of us are still dealing. And I think this is why you see this large demographic popping up on TikTok talking about relationships, boundaries. Like, it's literally like we're all starting from square one. So you can sit there and think, oh, yeah, no, that's not me. I'm out of that. Life has shown me that I can slide back and I can do it very dramatically And this is a horse that I'm going to have to constantly get myself back on top of. I know that this may feel different for everybody, but personally, I feel like it's a language that I'm going to have to constantly reinforce. It's a lane that I'm going to have to make sure that I never swerve off of. And just because I had one horrible dating experience doesn't mean that that's the only context that I can experience codependency. Like having it inflicted on me is one thing, but then yeah, I can inflict it on others. And if I don't have anybody to inflict it on, then I'm just inflicting it on myself. And one of the ways that we see ourselves inflicting it onto ourselves is thinking that my life doesn't mean anything unless another person is there to validate it, specifically in a romantic context as a spouse. Or even telling yourself, my life can't begin until I have a relationship. My life won't actually start until I find the love of my life. You could also be telling yourself, I can't go to that restaurant that I've been looking at until I go with a man. And not because you want him to pay, but because you want that restaurant to have a sentimental meaning. And this is just in the context within limiting yourself. This isn't talking about being codependent in a relationship, not having any boundaries, and just being all over that person. But that is the way that it can progress. One of the worst things that could happen is that you end up in a relationship that's definitely not one that you should be in, but you stay in it because you tell yourself no one else will ever love me. Some of the other ways are how we internalize our own value. If a man doesn't want to have us in his life, we think that we might not even be worthy of sharing a life with. Wow, a man doesn't want to be committed to me. I must not be shit. 
Or maybe you're somebody who's never had a Valentine and you're thinking like, oh my God, I must have absolutely no value in the eyes of other human beings. Because at this point, somebody would have been willing to take me out on a date, get me flowers, buy me a card. Or maybe you're just somebody who's in your adulthood. And at this point, you thought, I was going to have kids by now. I was going to have a home. I was going to have an apartment. My life was going to have romantic meaning. Like I should have a connection. I should be in a relationship. If you're a millennial, you feel this twice as hard because of the movies that we grew up watching, the things that we were told would happen to us if we just went to school and if we just gave our man everything that he wanted. You know, haha, Cosmopolitan Magazine or those speakers that would come into our classes. It's like we were lied to at every single step of the way about what we needed to do if we wanted to live a successful life and we followed every single step and then none of it happened. Ugh, if you're Gen Z listening to this or potentially even Gen Alpha, which is, whoo wild to me um I can't say what you guys have been through but as a millennial the the cut is twice as deep so here we are after doing the turnaround switcheroonie gluck gluck 9000 and here we are after acquiring like twenty thousand dollars of school debt maybe some of you have the lower end of the spectrum maybe some of you guys are in the one hundred thousand dollar bracket and our life is not the way we thought it would be and we feel like we have this incredible lack of meaning and we're like losing this connection that we could have had if only we had value. This is where I'm going to turn into that TikTok sound and go, stand up. There is so much more to life than having a relationship, having a man, having something in your early 20s that could entail a lifelong commitment. And you might think, Fleeksy, but I'm ready for that. I've been ready. That's all I've ever wanted. All right. I hear you. And I get it because I was you. And in some ways, I still somewhat am you. One thing I want to clarify is while there are some codependency issues that kind of lurk amongst this way of thinking, there might even be a little bit of pick because yeah, we were raised to be that. We were told to fight for our man, wait for our turn in line to have access to him. We were listening to songs by Taylor Swift like, oh, you belong to me. No, you don't. No, that, stay where you are if that's where you want to be. If you don't see what's in front of you, goodbye. Then we have songs like, I ain't got no money, I can't take you on a date, and we dance to it at clubs. We listen to it in traffic, we put it on our iPods. We were literally programmed to think that we should have a man at any expense and to like do what we can to have him, whether it financially expended us, whether it broke up our friend group, whether it tore us apart from our families, and that is not the case. That is so fucking unhealthy and toxic. There's even this narrative around marriages like, oh my God, don't let your marriage fail. Work on your marriage. Like it's your fault that someone else was toxic. Like you could control you and someone else's compatibility. When a man decides to either be disrespectful or abusive or just like reveals that he's completely incompetent when it comes to raising children. But let's take it away from marriages and go to casual relationships. Like you think that you're going to be able to force someone to see your value. And maybe not force per se, but you think you're going to post the right amount of selfies to make them realize how hot you are or show them how nice your car is. And maybe even if they see the way that you live, maybe then they will realize, wow, this is somebody I should treat with respect. Someone who potentially doesn't even value themselves, which by the way, somebody who doesn't value themselves will never value someone who values themselves because they just don't get it. At that point, it's a matter of ethics and lifestyle. And if that person just doesn't live that lifestyle, they're not going to realize the mentality that goes into maintaining one like that. So no, Bozo Joe isn't going to care that you as a woman who works out, has a beautiful car, has a nicely well-kept home, and someone who spends like $300 on her hair every two months, like he's not going to see that and think, wow, I should live up to that. Like, if Bozo Joe doesn't even wipe his own ass, take showers, or clean his own place, all he's going to think is that you're going to be someone who steps up to the plate on his behalf if he can even get you convinced. He might feel entitled to someone like you. Like, someone like that isn't going to try to meet you at your level. No, they're going to bring you down to theirs. I bring up this example because you don't need to try so hard to get someone to like you or to value you or to cherish you. Because at the end of the day, if somebody doesn't already see that, it has more to do with them and where they are in their life versus your own actual value and what you have to offer as a person in a relationship or to even a committed dynamic. 
it seems like, oh, but it's logic. Like if there's this man who I can help with his career and invite into my lifestyle and share all the beautiful things that I have to offer, my love, my home, my cooking, why wouldn't he want that? Why wouldn't he want to accept that into his world? Any smart person would accept something that would benefit them. And because the guy that you're dealing with is potentially secretly a bum who's been hiding all these aspects of himself just to have physical access to you, doesn't want to invite you and all your amazing, wonderful qualities into his life. Which, by the way, he could be lying about how exciting and thrilling it actually is. You think, wow, well, a smart person wouldn't reject all these good things. They must not actually be important. They must not actually be of value. Which, by the way, cooking, cleaning, having nice things, like that doesn't define your worth. You just existing as a woman in a man's world has inherent worth. All those other things just happen to be qualities outside of your personality. Honestly, fuck that guy. Fuck all these guys that we meet online on dating apps who we think are actually being themselves with us, especially if they're rushing to fuck you. They show up as the highest, most presentable version of themselves, borderline like you're a parole officer, and they keep that up as long as humanly possible until they get the opportunity to fuck you. And then... Because we were convinced that we had a man who was of high status and caliber, we're left with ourselves after being fucked like, damn, I must have been bad at what I did. Or even worse, I must not be worthy of human decency and connection and getting responded to within a timely manner and making plans and being taken on dates because he doesn't want to do any of that with me. No, sis. He only wanted to fuck. He only wanted to get it in and get it out. Maybe he has a mindset about you know, just moving on from one woman to the next, you know, putting in these notches in his belt. Maybe he is just someone who validates himself through the access to women. But the bottom line is that you put all your worth in whether a man who you did not know, who doesn't want a relationship but told you that he did or acted like he did or treated you like a boyfriend without the title, we let our basic need for respect, communication, trust, and to have affection and potentially even our goals as an adult, living with a significant other, being with a man, maybe even having kids, maybe even commitment, lifelong commitment, marriage, kids. Like we let it hinge in the power of that man's hands. And he backs out. We blame it on ourselves. We let it define us. We internalize it. We personalize it. And some of us end up in like a mental illness state for months. <sighs> That's giving way too much power to a man. At the core of all these things is trajectory, meaning, excitement, purpose. We're looking to a man to give us purpose. The point is that you are looking for meaning, but romance and dating, it's not something that you can necessarily control in your life. These are things that some people just happen to get lucky to find. And if you're somebody who holds yourself to a high value, it's just going to get five times harder because now you're dealing with the fact that nobody can match your level of value or they might actively bring it down with the way that they live their life. Or they straight up don't see it. They don't respect your value. They treat you like someone who has none. If you don't think that I'm worth getting a text message back or you think that you can just casually ghost me every now and then and just never respond to me, no, fuck you. Don't talk to me. I communicate with everybody at this level. I know it's possible. So if you can't give that to me, goodbye. We can't control how well our dating life goes. All we can really control is keeping the dumbass motherfuckers who don't see our value or who disrespect us or who don't even value relationships away from us. And even then, we might not know these things until after date number three, date number four. Some guys wait until they feel like they got you right where they want you. And this is such a fucking trip because it's like you just want it to be over. Like you want the search to be over. You want the wait to be over. You don't want to keep testing these guys. You don't want to keep putting on your makeup and going out on dates. You just want to get to the good part. And sometimes we want these things so bad that we overlook these basic red flags or we don't even attempt to look for them or filter them out. We just continuously give chances to guys who show us that they don't deserve any chances. And the worst thing that could happen to you if you're in this position is that you're someone who doesn't already have a life that's fulfilling. Like you're not pursuing the goals that you want to pursue. Maybe you're not even being honest about what they really are. Maybe you lack friendship in certain areas and you're not just trying to find a man. You're trying to find a best friend and a man. 
which I mean, they should be both. But let's assume that you have none. Right. And then you're trying to create your friend circle starting with him. It's a rough place to be. And I get it because I've done it. If you are somebody who doesn't already have a good core group of friends or maybe just like fulfilling friendships or if you're somebody who doesn't already create their own excitement like maybe you don't travel or maybe you don't find activities in your daily life that you actively enjoy or maybe if you're someone who doesn't even have a career that you're like fully excited about or maybe you're not working towards this like passion project on your own private time. If you're somebody who has just blank slate after blank slate you're probably looking to fill it up with another person. That's one of the worst places you can be because all of these things involve an aspect of giving love in ways that you can't give romantically. They also have some element of fulfillment, meaning, and purpose tied to them. And while there may be some element of luck that plays into your success in these things, these are generally areas that you can control. You can plan traveling, you can make friends by going to certain locations or putting yourself out there, or even your hobbies and your passion project. You can develop these skills, you can work towards a career, but you can't control your love life. You may increase your opportunities in your love life by putting yourself out on Tinder, Hinge, Bumble, or maybe even going out to bars during happy hour, but that doesn't mean it's automatically going to be successful because you could be getting bombarded by losers or men who just want sex or maybe just these people who don't recognize your value, which is still an L. Like You can't guarantee that just because you're putting yourself out there that you're automatically going to find someone who's a right fit for you. You might even find someone who wants to be married to you, but you don't want to be married back to them. To a man who's a loser or a man who doesn't actually have value of his own, one of the best things that you could do is make him the meaning of your life. Put him on a pedestal because then he can take advantage of you. He can utilize his ability to linger meaning and purpose and excitement over your head to make the most out of what he can get from you, whether it's sex, emotional attention, validation, just even being able to say that he knows a woman or has a rotation. Ah. So it's really important that your life is so fulfilled that you end up being in the position of a man trying to fit into your world and not you being eagerly desperate to fit a man into yours. I promise there is nothing that a man can give you that you can't give yourself. Besides maybe a penis that's like 98.5 degrees and has blood running through it, his friends are always going to be his friends. His job is always going to be his job. He might be able to give you money and yeah, you know, you could build on top of your income. (laughs) Haha, sugar daddy status. But a man in your hole won't make you whole. Imagine relying on a man for every single thing in your life. Like, so then what? When you lose the man, you just lose the meaning of your life? That's like three times as crushing. Some people crave the intimacy and emotional validation and purpose and meaning in their life from a man so badly that they are willing to financially expend themselves to have it. Some of these people might be individuals who we say have big hearts. Like it's one thing to share with somebody that you love if you already are like in a really good place. But if it's somebody who you just met and you're already paying for the dates and you're already paying for the experiences just so that you can have them, please, dear God, don't do that to yourself. Especially if you're somebody who's dating for marriage or kids. What do you think a guy who doesn't work or a guy who's hyped about you paying for everything is going to be like as a father? Can you say it with me now? deadbeat, bum, dusty, and you could potentially be attracting a lifelong parasite. You don't even have to be in your 20s for this to happen. This could happen in your 30s. This could happen in your 40s. This could happen in your 50s. You can meet a man who's excited to date you because you are paying for everything or because you are willing to be the breadwinner in the relationship. There is so much more to a relationship with a man than him being able to give you dick and him being able to cuddle with you at night and just being a vessel for you to say, I love you too. My point in saying all of this is that you could be willingly inviting toxicity or instability, which I mean, of course, that's subjective. I don't want to be ignorant here and act like everybody has the same idea of what a fulfilling relationship looks like. I don't think that you should be so eager for love that you allow a dirty John into your life. If anybody hasn't seen it, it's a Netflix show. And even the lady who was dating this broke man, she would be like, oh my God, I've never dated anybody who treated me so nice. I never dated anybody so attentive. Like emphasis on the love bombing aspect. The desire to love and be loved is human. It's so natural and you're not wrong for feeling this way. 
However, you are potentially hurting yourself by hinging all of the happiness that you can ever experience in life on it, by putting your ability to be happy in the hands of a man who can literally crush it overnight or within a week or in a month. And look, maybe you're not that person that hinges all your happiness on it. Maybe you do know that, hey, there's more to life than being in a relationship. But maybe you're this person who feels like if I don't have that validation of somebody wanting to commit to me, then it's all for nothing. Look, you could have like 10 men right now wanting to commit to you, but those men could be shit. Someone merely wanting you feels so cheap when you want yourself. Like you could have so much going on that somebody who just wants you and is very eager to have you could actually be derailing to all of your activities, hobbies, goals, friendships. And this is why it's so important for you to have all of those things so that when a man finally does come around offering you those things, you don't think, oh, well, it looks good on paper that a man wants to be with me. Oh, well, this would make for at least some cute Instagram photos or some cute Facebook pictures. One of the hardest things I had to learn was around the age of 24 when I literally was in that phase of, oh, if I have a boyfriend that I'm showing the world that like I'm hitting the stage of life that I should be at at this age. I mean, you even watch Demi Lovato go through this too with that Max guy. You'll be in that relationship on a day-to-day basis being like, hey, this feels weird. This feels off. I feel like I should objectively have a good relationship because he's 6'4", he's buff, he has a career, he wants me in his life, but you're not fulfilled. And as long as you feel like you need to prove something to the world or prove something to outsiders or show yourself that you've changed or like you need to make this big PR move to tell people, hey, look, I am on the same life path as you. Hey, look, I am normal. Hey, look, I'm not this person who you should ignore because look, someone loves me. So why shouldn't you? As long as you feel like that you have to do that to outsiders, you're going to end up with this feeling of trying to keep up with the race of being in love just to say that you have love. And this is what keeps us in toxic relationships. This is what keeps us with abusive people who we lie about online as making us happy. This is how we end up in situations for way too fucking long that have no business being in our life. Like maybe we'll date somebody for one month and we'll know by the end of that month that we shouldn't be there. We'll know by the end of three months that it's time to get the hell out. But we don't leave until month number six or month number eight or nine. No, I don't have eight months to wait in a relationship that's not for me or just to prove to the world that I can be in a relationship. Fuck that. Fuck that noise. The saddest thing is that when I did these relationships, I did one hmm, in 2018 right after I graduated college because this man was able to get me while I felt alone, while I felt like nobody would hire me, when I was already in this period of confusion and just needing a life raft. Like, you probably don't end up in this situation unless you are confused, you are judging your own judgment, and you are low on life, and you feel like you need to regain control or show that you're still on a life path of some sort. So it's like, okay, well, at least my relationship sector is doing fine. Um, no. And honestly, I think all your other sectors, <laughs> career, hobbies, friends, traveling, anything of any merit of value that doesn't come from a man exclusively, like I think all of those should be somewhat in order before you think, let me fill this hole with a man. Because then all you end up with is all of your disorganized mess going on in the background and a man adding more time constraints to your life. Oh, and a man who's in a relationship with you that you don't even necessarily find enthusiastically fun. If you are someone who is listening to this and has never had an official boyfriend or an official relationship or an official valentine, it's really hard to explain it from the outside, but there is no way to describe how unfulfilling and empty and despondent you will feel in a relationship where a man is not emotionally meeting your needs, in a relationship with a man who doesn't respond to your conversation with full thoughts or depth, or if you're just dating a man who's not meeting your requirements and you have to communicate over and over and over again. Like you can have commitment and be fucking miserable. Like you can go home with chills in your body. It's so bad. And the worst part is, is that if you're in that mindset of, oh, well, I need to show the world that I can hold a relationship or that I'm on this path of life that everybody else should be on at my age, you'll stay in it, you'll tolerate it. Or even if you just feel like you need to be on that life path, you'll tell yourself, I can fix them, I can make this better. But besties, 
Situations like that rarely get better. And God forbid you felt the pressure to make it seem so happy on the outside, take a whole bunch of pictures on social media, never vocalize your unhappiness with your friends or family. Because then the moment when you do finally leave that person, do you know how invalidating it's going to feel to hear, oh, but you seem so happy. Oh, but you looked like you were doing well in that relationship. And then you have to tell them every single account of what happened right then and there. Like you have to unfold the load. That's something that you don't want to deal with. It's like you're going to be re-traumatizing yourself with every single person that you tell who thought you were so happy. And for some of us, we don't realize that relationships aren't the end-all be-all until we have one of those dynamics. And even then, we could still carry on some type of codependent mindset when we go into our next relationship. And that's if we're coming from a place where we don't have friends or our friendships are unfulfilling our careers are unfulfilling or we're not being honest about the career that we want or the goals that we actually want for ourselves because maybe we're telling ourselves oh yeah you know I want that goal but maybe it's not actually for me but it's like did you even try are you willing to be bad at it at first because come on we don't all start off good we all have to kind of suck at first and that's okay You could go through something so annoying and irking like a relationship that you just had just to prove that you could have one and you could move on to the next relationship and tell yourself, oh, well, I can't generate excitement in my own life, so hopefully my next partner can do that for me. I can't allow myself to have excitement unless I'm having it within the context of a relationship. Like these are not things that you have to do with another man. But the point is that if you wait for a man to do these things, you, one, might not ever do them. Or two, finally get to do them and you're doing it with someone who's emotionally unfulfilling, physically unfulfilling, or someone who just doesn't meet all your needs. And this is specifically if you are just trying to fill a man into the boyfriend slot of your life. Like you really think it's all going to come together just because you filled a man into that slot. And look, while relationships can be fulfilling and you can end up happy in one or happy with the person that you are with, like I'm not writing that off entirely. Come on, let's be real. There are people with good relationships. More often than not, most people are out here just thinking that they should be in one or that they have something to prove by being in one and then they end up in these things that are ass. Don't subject yourself to that. Go look at what it's like online to actually be in some of these relationship dynamics. Like there's a lot of people constantly outing the unhappiness from just like quote unquote settling. Like don't settle. That's the point. And sure as hell don't settle because you think that you are somehow reinforcing your value as a human being, a woman, an adult on this earth just because another man said, oh, I'm attracted to you. Oh, I want to commit to you. Like, do you know how many men are attracted to women or men who are willing to commit who have no business trying to do that? Like, sometimes just because a man wants to commit doesn't mean that he's actually commitment worthy. Like, girl, you could be committing to having a son or a nightmare. Don't do it. And I know if you're someone who's been single for like maybe your entire life or maybe you've only had one boyfriend, it's like, Fleeksy, how are you going to tell us how we should feel about being single or what it means to not ever have a relationship? As someone who subscribed to the idea that my life didn't start until I had a man in it or I can't have good things unless there's a man in my world or oh my god Christmas time is coming around gotta be booed up oh Valentine's Day is around the corner if I don't find someone to spend that day with or exchange cards with or candy then I ain't shit as someone who adhered to that like it was a religion I can tell you that it is not worth it It is stupid. You end up making those seasons like Christmas, Valentine's Day. Yeah, those seasons end up becoming worthless. Like it's worth spending it with someone just because you felt like you had to. On top of it being an entirely arbitrary concept that I adopted from movies and the media, there's this other element of how much unnecessary stress that places on your life for those times in the year. Like it literally feels like you're only allowed to be happy from March through August and then the rest of the year is motherfucking crunch time. Or, oh my god, how could I have not used March through August to line up my booze? No, that's like, I can't imagine living another day in my 20s like that and you shouldn't have to either. But there's also this value that you place on yourself when it doesn't happen. And when I say the value that you place, I mean the lack thereof. Because the reality is, is that you could end up booed up during these seasons or you could have someone just to say that you have someone and you could still feel bad about where you are in life. You could still feel like you are low on friendship or low on meaningful relationships, 
And in general, you can still be unfulfilled. You can still feel like you might not really have that much value. Like there's even this other toxic element of, okay, now I have a man that wants me. If there are men that are outside my relationship that don't want me besides my man, then I extra feel like I ain't shit. Like it's just this guy who wants me because he's crazy. Because clearly I have no value. So somebody who likes me, like there must be something wrong with him. While you can always find validation through others, it's important that the main source of validation is yourself. And I know I say this in like every other episode, but especially in today's episode, bitch. And look, because I used to be that hoe who placed my value on whether a man saw value in me, I'm going to say it like it is for this one talking point. If you have a friend who feels this way, do you know what's going to happen as soon as she gets a man? She's going to leave you for that man. You're not going to see her until that relationship is over. And I know because I was her and I am not condoning this behavior. I'm just saying it's kind of like a reflection of that mindset of like, oh, I can't exist in this world with value unless a man deems me to have it romantically in a committed context. The alternate universe of this type of girl, if she's not the one who's leaving you for her relationship, is the one who brings her man to every event or every occasion that you did not ask her to do and he just ends up ruining the vibe. It is truly not the motherfucking vibe. It's not the vibe. I think with all topics like this, there has to be a solution and I'd like to think that I was bringing it up around almost every talking point but it's about being self-fulfilled. And this is where it gets difficult because it's like, I can't define what fulfillment looks like for you. That's subjective. That's for you to decide. And in a part of that decision-making, you have to be brutally honest with yourself. You have to be extremely cutthroat about who you actually want in your life as a friend. If you're just allowing every motherfucker to be your friend, that's how you're going to have the most shallowest relationships. Because if you're a friend to everyone, you're a friend to no one. I'll just say it right now. Your coworkers, while you can't be friendly with them, they are not your friends. Uh, people that you go to school with, your study friends, they are homework friends, right? So like have these subcategories of friend groups and be very honest about the role that they have in your life because not everybody is going to have the same meaning to you. And quite honestly, you have to be fluid. Like you have to be like water when it comes to the different areas in life that you end up existing in. At work, around your family, and yes, around your friends and your deep relationships. And if you're coming from that codependent place in your life where you feel like you need a man in your world so that you can start doing exciting things, but only because he's doing exciting things and now you can be an addition to them, you need to be really honest with yourself. What do you consider exciting? Because a guy's idea of exciting doesn't necessarily always match up with yours. Like he could be into snowboarding and motorcycles and you can think those are shithead things to do. But if you see a man who you think like, oh, it's really exciting that he's so passionate about his career or, oh, it's so awesome that like he created this life where he's always going to these events and having these things to go to, that is your solution. And look, sometimes we might just like the idea of what they're doing. We might not even actually want verbatim what they're doing for our own lives. We just think like it looks really cool on the outside, right? And we just find it awesome that somebody managed to create that for themselves. For myself, I know that I had to be extremely honest about my jealousy towards a man's ability to like just completely find his passion in life and his purpose. And the thing is that when it comes to your purpose, that can always change. It doesn't have to look like the same thing every single day, every single month, every single year. It can change again and again and again. So be okay with that possibility that like what you do this year might not be what you find purpose in the next. I had years where I felt like my purpose was live streaming. Then I had another year where I felt like my purpose was TikTok. Uh, This year, I'm kind of like, (laughs) I can't really say. Like, I feel like I'm enjoying podcasting. I'm enjoying working with brands. But it doesn't have to look so cut, dry, and narrow. Whatever you want doesn't have to be what everybody else wants for themselves. It just has to be something that you feel like is like advancing you internally and externally. And the money aspect is such a small portion of it because best believe there was one point in my life where I was making that good good from Twitch and I felt so depressed. I felt like I was on fight or flight. I was angry and there was people who I would talk to who were like, but you're making all this money. Like, why do you feel like that? Because it's not about the money. It's just about the fulfillment that you get. Money is just a tool and a resource, but that's another conversation. And let's address the final most important talking point when it comes to feeling like we have no value unless we're in a relationship. The idea that no one is going to love me unless I accept the love from this mediocre man or this half-assed dude or just the first dude that blinked his eyes in my direction. This is so false. This is assuming that your friends don't love you. This is assuming that your family doesn't love you. 
This is assuming that maybe you probably exist in an online space and there are people who love your post who don't also love you. And while love can look different, and yeah, you're probably thinking, well, you know, when I say I want love, I mean like that physical good, good love. Okay, but you, you know, I said it before, you can have that and you can still be deeply unfulfilled in like almost every other area. There's so many more pillars to a relationship than just being touched and hugged and cuddled and told that somebody cares about you. But then, you know, they could also be very mediocre at conversation or they might not be able to express full thoughts to like full depth that's satisfying enough for you. Does anybody remember the show The Golden Girls? All those women who lived with each other and clearly had love for each other? Like, do you know that that's what love can look like? You have to be open to the idea of different forms of love that aren't physical, that aren't like intimate in the sheets. Or maybe you're just stressed out because you feel like you have no one to directly give your love to. I'm not saying go have a kid so that you can give unfettered love to that because, you know, kids can turn around and end up hating you. Or sometimes, you know, we might not even be built for parenthood. But I also think that there's this aspect of like, if you want to give unconditional love, you can have a pet. You can get a cat. You can get a dog. I know that sounds like a very piss-ass coping strategy, but it is really nice to have if that's just what you want. And sometimes people completely forget the idea that you can love your purpose in life. You could love your career. You can love your hobbies or you can love a talent that you're developing. You can fall in love with books, topics. You can love your friends. There's other areas of love that you can have in your life that aren't within the confines of a man. And I said it before, but the most devastating thing that could happen is that you lose that man and you lose your life purpose and you lose all sense of meaning. Like you might end up in a mental place that is dangerous. And I know because uh, I've been there and we see it a lot all the time online. The point of this is that there is more to life than men penises, having one in your life. Like, yeah, you can, and there's nothing wrong with that, but don't make it the entire thing that your mind and world revolves around because first of all, penises are attached to people and people are unstable. They're unpredictable. You cannot hinge all of your happiness on one because then you are hinging your happiness on unpredictability. Personally, it's really hard for me to know what your value is and to remind you of it if I don't know who you are and I can't speak directly to it. So I'm not going to pretend like I can, but just know that there is a value there whether a man sees it or not. And a man's inability to see it, to value it, to cherish you, or to commit to you is not a reflection of who you are. It has everything to do with who he is, where he is in his life, and how he can even show up for himself. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for listening to today's podcast. Did you know that I have an official YouTube channel for this podcast where I re-upload the episodes? I like to do it so you can leave comments and feedback directly on them. So please do. I'm also Fleeksy on Instagram and YouTube. Go follow me everywhere. I'm also Fleeksy on TikTok. So check me out. Also, hi, if you're listening on Apple and Spotify, leave your girl a rating. But five stars leave me five stars, please. It really helps me out. It's a $0 method of spreading Fleeksy supremacy. Normally, I add a bunch of censors and bleeps to the episode, but today is February 13th, and I'm trying to get this shit out before Valentine's Day so that all my hoes are happy and they're not feeling sad by themselves, if they are by themselves. Or maybe if they're with someone who's mediocre and they need to know that they don't need to be in a situation that's not fulfilling them. All right, you guys, that's going to be the end of it today. I really appreciate everybody listening to today's episode. I hope you all have a good day. Thank you so much for listening again and again and again. All right, guys. Bye.